Understanding your body composition is an important aspect of maintaining overall health and wellness. So, let's learn how to interpret the results from the InBody 970 result sheet. Starting from the top of the result sheet, we have the body composition analysis. If you look at the right side of the section, you are going to see your total body weight. Your total body weight is actually made up of four different compartments that includes body water, protein, minerals, and body fat. Water is the largest component of the human body, making up approximately 50 to 70% of total body weight. And the water can be found in our muscles, cells, blood, and other bodily fluids. Protein is the crucial element in the human body and it acts as the building block for the muscles. And by totaling up the total body water and protein, we will get the value for soft lean mass. Minerals are inorganic substances that are essential in many bodily functions. Minerals found inside the bones are osseous minerals and minerals found in all other parts of the body are known as non-osseous minerals. Adding up the minerals, total body water, and protein will give you the value for fat-free mass. Fat plays an essential role in our body by helping us store energy and insulate our body. However, maintaining too high or too low of body fat is generally not advisable for long-term health. And lastly, when you add your body fat mass and fat-free mass, you will get your total body weight. Now, let's take a look at the muscle fat analysis. The muscle fat analysis breaks down your weight into kilograms of skeletal muscle mass and body fat mass. Skeletal muscle is the muscle attached to the bones and is the muscle that you can work out at the gym. Both body fat mass and skeletal muscle mass are the largest components of the body and are important indicators of your health. And by connecting the ends of each bar, you can determine your body shape. The first shape is C, which stands for cautious, where your body fat mass is more than your skeletal muscle mass. The second shape is I, which stands for ideal, where the recommended portion of your weight, skeletal muscle mass, and body fat mass are balanced and in a parallel line. The third shape is D, which stands for develop, where the skeletal muscle mass is more than the body fat mass. So, in short, it is advisable to aim for your skeletal muscle mass to be in the normal or over range and to aim your body fat mass to be in the normal range. Let's move on to the obesity analysis. Although BMI is commonly used, it is not accurate for everyone because BMI calculates your obesity level straightly based on your weight and height only. In specific, for muscularly fit individuals that have a high muscle mass and low body fat, BMI will categorize them as obese. So, instead of looking at BMI, we focus on the percent body fat, that is the ratio of your body fat mass divided by your weight. And it is advisable to aim for your percent body fat to be in the normal range. Other than knowing about your body fat mass, you can also know about your visceral fat area. There are two types of fat in our body. One is subcutaneous fat, that is the fat below the skin. And the other one is visceral fat, that is the fat that surrounds your organs. Visceral fat is the most dangerous kind of fat to have, as high visceral fat is linked to type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. Therefore, it is recommended to maintain your visceral fat area below 100 cm square. Now, let's talk about the segmental lean analysis that shows how your lean body mass is distributed in your body. Besides that, it also evaluates your left and right muscle balance. 
The top bar shows your lean mass in kilograms, and it also compares your current lean mass to a population with the same height and gender. So, if the top bar length is at 100%, it means that the individual is at the exact ideal lean mass when compared to a population with the same height and gender. Meanwhile, the bottom bar tells you whether your current lean mass is able to support your current body weight, where 100% is sufficient, and it is advisable to aim the bottom bar of each segment of your body to be in the normal range. Besides that, aim for corresponding segments to be of equal lengths for left and right muscle balance. Next, let's talk about the ECW ratio analysis. So, the total body water is actually made up of two compartments, the extracellular water and intracellular water. Extracellular water is the water located outside the cells such as the blood, plasma, and interstitial fluid, while intracellular water is the water located inside the cells such as in the muscle cells. The water distribution in a healthy individual is usually 62% intracellular water and 38% extracellular water. In the in-body 970 result sheet, the water balance distribution is represented as ECW ratio, which is the ratio of extracellular water to total body water. So, when we convert the ECW percentage into a ratio, we will see a value of 0.38 in the result sheet. A low ECW ratio below 0.36 indicates high muscle mass, which is due to the increase in intracellular water stored in the muscles. A normal ECW ratio between 0.36 to 0.39 indicates that the body water is well balanced, and a high ECW ratio above 0.39 indicates edema or excess water retention in the body, which is caused by an increase in extracellular water. And it is important to pay more attention to a high ECW ratio as the cause of this excess water retention could be due to various health conditions such as heart failure and kidney disease. Besides that, the excess water retention could also be due to inflammation or injury. Moreover, a high ECW ratio can also indicate malnutrition or aging because loss of muscle causes a decrease in intracellular water. So, it is advisable to aim for ECW ratio to be in the normal range of 0.36 to 0.39. And before we move on to the next section, keep in mind that you can also find the ECW ratio for each segment of your body in the segmental lean analysis above. Now, let's take a look at the right side of the result sheet where you can find more additional information of your body. But for now, let's focus on phase angle, which is often used as an indicator of nutritional status in body composition analysis. Phase angle is the angle of resistance on cellular membrane. A healthy, nourished cell has thicker cell membrane and electric current takes a longer time to penetrate, resulting in a higher phase angle. Meanwhile, malnourished cell has a thinner cell membrane, and electric current takes a shorter time to penetrate, resulting in a lower phase angle. A high phase angle is generally associated with better nutritional status, while a lower phase angle may indicate malnutrition or other health problems. So, it is advisable to aim for a phase angle of more than 4. And furthermore, we have SMI, Skeletal Muscle Index, which is a measurement used to assess the amount of skeletal muscle in relation to a person's height, and it is very useful in screening sarcopenia, a condition of muscle loss due to aging. 
Ideally, the SMI value for Asian should be more than 7 kg per meter square for men and more than 5.7 kg per meter square for women. Any lesser than that will put you at a higher risk of developing sacropenia. And at the very bottom of the result sheet, we have the body composition history that can help you keep track of your body composition changes over time. By knowing how your muscle mass and body fat have changed over time, it can give you a more accurate understanding of how well your diet or exercise regime is working for you. And lastly, there's your in-body score. The in-body score is an evaluation of your current body composition status, and it is based on your current muscle and fat condition in the weight control section. So basically, if you have more muscle mass, you will have a higher in-body score. In conclusion, understanding your body composition is crucial for achieving your health and fitness goals. So the next time you step on the scale, remember there's so much more to your health rather than just your weight.